In part 3 I tested a one way bearing that I want to install as a rotor overrun. I want an overrun mainly because it's a good idea should the engine ever seize. I know I nearly caused an engine seizure on this occasion. It might look like a steam powered helicopter in the video but it was in fact coolant leaking from a hose at an alarmingly rapid rate. I decided I wanted to have the overrun inside the drive pulley mainly because it isolates the drive shaft from the rotors, which would have been nice in this situation. Otherwise, a clever way to introduce an overrun would be to have it as part of the centrifugal clutch. Igor Benson did this in the 1950s and this is how. See the way the clutch shoes are hinged so they apply force to the drum in one direction and release via springs in the other. A great design choice, except in my case, I want to isolate the drive shaft as well. As you might remember, the needle roller one way bearings need a precision fit. My first job is to get the pulley in the lathe and bore it to size. Holding this pulley in the lathe, I needed a very thin shim because the jaws aren't holding the same number of teeth on each jaw. That is throwing the bore off slightly despite boring the jaws. I spent a good hour mounting the pulley in the chuck and getting it as true as possible. That's the trouble making helicopter parts. You want everything as accurate as you can and that takes time. I'm going to bore this pulley rather than drill and ream. That is because I don't trust reamers enough to get it to the right size. They can sometimes be 0.05 of a millimeter oversize and that won't be any good. However, boring this pulley is going to be difficult. I want a parallel bore within 0.02 of a millimeter and I want the size within the same tolerance. The bore bar is sticking out over six times the diameter of the bore bar. Normally, you wouldn't exceed three times the bar diameter, but I've got no choice here. This means the bar will spring lots and plenty of spring cuts will be needed. The spindle speed will also have to be kept low as it will chatter otherwise. To make sure the bore is parallel within tolerance, I'm moving the cutting tool in diameter as it's cutting. The lathe will ball parallel within 0.1 of a millimeter over this length, but that isn't accurate enough. To measure the bore diameter, these bore gauges are quite good. That's come out really well and I can press in the one way bearings. Next, I want to turn this into this.
I want to share with you a new idea to solve the drive shaft problem. I showed you in a previous video an idea that consisted of two telescopic box sections separated by flat cage needle roller bearings. A lot of people with concerns about this design, some saying aluminium was the wrong material choice, some saying the rollers will indent into the aluminium. I addressed the aluminium fatigue concern by calculating the fatigue life, but I haven't tested the roller indentation concern. My main concern with this design would be keeping the rollers in the right place. They would probably stay in the right place under load, but would drop to the bottom of the joint when stationary. My choice then is to abandon this idea in favour of a better design. It's a shame because the idea was lightweight and the new idea is heavier. So here it is. Sticking with telescopic tubes, round ones this time and again aluminium, I've got the inner tube with cross holes drilled. This is for press fitted hardened steel rod. CF53 is the material I'll be using and there'll be four of them at 8mm diameter. I've done some strength calculations on the rods and it looks good to me. The outer tube, again aluminium, will have slots. These are likely to be just clearance slots. The tube wall thickness will be 3.25mm on the outer and around 5.5mm on the inner tube. The inner one needs to be thicker so that the pins have something strong enough to push on. There will be around 1mm of clearance between inner and outer tubes. Next I will make 8 of these slotted bearing guides. They are going to be made of steel, probably EN8, which will be screwed to the outer tube via M4 caphead screws tapped into the aluminium tube. The screws will be wire locked to each other so they can't come undone. On the end of the pins will be closed end needle roller bearings, just like the ones used on universal joints. Some end float will be necessary. I would imagine 0.1 of a millimetre will be sufficient. What centralises the inner tube from the outer tube will be the position of the CHEV53 hardened pins that are pressed into the inner tube. Of course, any movement of these pins would result in the shaft being out of concentric and, of course, out of balance. But I don't think it would result in a dramatic failure if this happened, just some vibration. Another concern might be the N4 tapped holes in the aluminium, which is only 3.2mm thick. I don't think the needle rollers will indent into the steel roller guides, but I haven't checked this. If they do, then I'll make hardened roller guides. The overall weight of the drive shaft will be less than what I had before, so that's really good news, and it means that I could encase the drive shaft within a larger tube attached to the frame for safety. I look forward to your thoughts on this, positive or negative, but I think it's a promising idea. Till next time.